Pirates fight for old Southwestern, so I'm a modern deer. Pirates fight for old Southwestern, so victory is near. To Southwestern will be loyal to the sun from, from the sky. And remember to the end that a fight will never die. Pirates fight. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to SU Football Weekly here on the Vibe Live Network, week number one in the books, week number two coming up. I am Merle Burchan, joined by the head coach of the Southwestern Pirates, Joe Austin, Jack Farrell, our producer, Cinna Vincott, Chuck Tracy here, Christina Weber, my better half, keeping an eye on the broadcast back at the comfy, cozy Vibe Live Studios, better known as our living room. And uh, welcome to week number two. I want to thank uh, some of our sponsors here before we get going. Antioch, Georgetown, Baylor Scott and White Healthcare, Chappelle Realty Group, Chick-fil-A, Chisholm Trail Pediatrics, Hewlett Chevrolet Buick Volkswagen. I got my car from them. They're good folks. Double Days Pizza, Eagle Wings, First Texas Bank, and Gary Brown CPA, just some of the many sponsors uh, responsible for Southwestern football. And uh, Coach Austin, got to tell you, we had some serious whiplash on Saturday night. Looking forward to the show. Not looking forward to the show quite so much for a few minutes there, but the Pirates pulled it out. Congratulations on an awesome win. Thank you. It was an awesome win. And I, as I, well, thanks. The guys did great. Yeah, it, it was uh, it was yeah, an interesting game. I'm sure we'll talk a lot about <laughs> it. And a, a game that I think no, I told a talking team on Sunday, I said, no matter what your role is in that game, whether you played a lot or didn't play any, you're going to remember that game. It's yeah. one that uh, you'll remember in your football career. So pretty fun. Yeah, I mean, I've seen sort of games with dramatic plays and that kind of stuff, but it was the way the dramatic plays happened. A big 20-yard play and then a fumble. You know, it, it, and there was like three or four times that happened. A tip pass that was caught for a touchdown. I don't remember seeing that many goofy plays in one game. Well, we didn't put them away. We had a chance to really uh, extend our lead and, and do some things to, to you know, take the 21 to three lead and make it 28 or 35, even when they had a score and made it 21 to nine. Um, you know, we, we had to start another drive again and then turn it over. So we just got to do a little bit better job of uh, finishing when we have the chance. I think if we finish better when we have the chance, we can uh, keep everyone's heart rate down and everyone's <laughs> blood pressure down just a little bit more. Well, let's take a look at some of the highlights from Saturday night's game. A 30, got to do my math there, 32, no, 32. 32-31. 30, yeah, that right first time. 32-31 overtime win. And uh, we'll talk about that two-point conversion in a few minutes as well. But let's take a look at some of the highlights from Saturday night's game. And then Coach and I will be back to break it down here in just a couple minutes. But it's football in Texas, and we're about ready to get underway. Swings it out left flat, complete up to the 25. Nice move up to the 30, bounce to the outside. 35 to the 40, and all the way out to the 42-yard line. Benjamin Lancaster puts the right foot into it, sends it spiraling into the right side. And takes a pirate roll all the way inside the 20 down to the 15, and it gets another little kick in the tail. It's going to roll all the way down to the 8-yard line, so a beautiful punt. Lasher, quick drop, and fires over to the right side. That ball is incomplete. Good snap. We'll drop the snap. In trouble in the end zone. He's going to go down. That's going to be a fumble for a touchdown. It is a pirate defense. All week. He was fun to watch play, let me tell you. And Gilpin breaks out of the first tackle, gets a nice block on the edge of the 25, cuts it up at the 30-yard line, and had about four yards on his own and then broke free and picked up another seven. Flasher dropping back. Fade pattern. Left side of the end zone and incomplete. Just off the fingertips. Hand off to Martin. And he's going to be met in the backfield and drop for a loss. We'll find out from Chuck between quarters. Third down and 13. Firing over the right side. And in and out of the ends and almost intercepted. Almost the old tip drill. Almost caught. It's a lot of it's work. It's a lot of work. I never realized it either as a player. 
First and 15 pass over to the left side. Got a receiver open and intercepted at the two-yard line. Now they're fighting for the football, but it looks like the Pirates will indeed come away with it. And hauling it in for Southwestern was Patrick Nicholas. Southwestern picks up the first down. First down, 10 to the 12-yard line. Gilpin fires right side, complete in the slot. Out to the 15. Big hole in the 20, 25. And out of bounds on the 29-yard line. Gilpin dropping back. Quarterback draw. He's got a lot of running. Now he fires it. Oh, he fooled him. Complete to the 50. 45, 40, 35, 30. Far sideline and knocked out of bounds on the 27-yard line. The entire stadium, myself included, thought that Gilpin was going to run that football. Wide right to the near side. Gilpin, play action. Dumps it off underneath, out of the backfield, into the end zone, touchdown! Out here. Dropping back. Lasher fires over to the right side, and that ball is incomplete. One of the near side. Dropping back, looking. Pump fake, fires over to the middle, and almost intercepted. Lasher dropping back. Pass over to the left side, in and out of the hands of the intended receiver. If he hauls it in, it may have been a touchdown, although the Pirates had good coverage. And uh, Peyton Vaughn may have stopped him anyway had he even hauled that one in. That was a bang-bang play, but he dropped it, and it's a turnover on down seven. They gave him three yards on the play, so second down and seven. There's Marion off right tackle. Nice hole across the 10, 15 to the outside. Spins across the 20 out to the 23-yard line. Over here. Good snap back. Ooh, that was a beauty. Hit of the night sky. Fair catch called for. It's going to take oh, a pirate nice. roll. Inside the 20, inside the 10, still rolling. They're going to escort it all the way down to the two-yard line. Pick up. Now Klein is the up back. Hand off to Martin. And they're going to do a little shuttle reverse here to the left side. Pirates have it strung out because they get to him. And they do. Goodness. What a beautiful play there by Peyton Vaughn. Who else snuffed out the reverse big time? Must have. Gilpin going for it. And caught it again. Into the end zone. Touchdown. Oh, my goodness. First down marker. And it's still second down. Play action pass, Gilpin, looking, firing over the center, got a receiver wide open, Joe Ducard at the 50, 45, 40, cuts it back to the 35, and he's going to be down there, no flags, a big play for the Pirates. High snap, and looks like he, he got, got pushed from behind anyway. Take care. It's a lot of wacky plays that have gone against the Pirates here. Gilpin sidearm slings it out to the 35 yard line, Wilson makes a nifty move and dives out to the 39. Trips wide left, one to the near side. Hopping back, Gilpin rolling to his left, pump fake. Now he's going to try to extend the play and fires over to the left side. Caught at the 50-yard line. That's going to be good for a pirate first down. Ten at the 35-yard line. Two receivers wide left. Handoff up the middle. And makes the first guy miss. And the second inside the 30 down to the 28-yard line. Gilpin. Shuttle pass left side. They're going to get the first down to Sagi inside the 25 down to the 23-yard line. To the near side, Gilpin. Going to keep it himself. Bouncer to the left side of the 20, 15, cutting it back down to the 10-yard line, inside the 10, oh, fumble ball, ball oh. came out, and CLU is going to recover the football. Going to hand it off to Martin right side, and they, they do get the stop. He's pushing the pile forward out to the 30-yard line, but a good play there by Gomez. Low snap, field to clean, and a short, high kick. Go get it. And it's going to angle out of bounds, so... Not a lot of distance. It's going to be marked at the 49. They're still triangulating. Wow. That's got the 48-yard line. That ball only traveled 18 yards. Gilpin dropping back. Looking left. Fires over to the left side. That ball is caught, but you're not inbound. They're going to stop the Hurry clock up. to move the chains. Get to the line. Spike Five it. Five seconds. they got to get up. They're going to stop the clock to move the chains. Pirates up quickly. Oh, there's confusion. There's confusion. Winding Spike the clock. It. Three, two, one. He goes one, one second. second. Should have one second. Good snap. Good hole. Kick is up. It is good. good. And we got overtime. Trips here to the near side. One receiver wide left. Dropping back. Looking downfield. Pass. Caught at the 10. And down to the 5 yard line. It's going to be first and goal. Quarterback keeper. Left side. They're going to cut it back up. And very close. He's into the end zone. Touchdown. Two defensive end. Here we go. Two-point conversion attempt for the win. Trips to the near side. Gilpin empty back set. Dropping back. Rolling right. In trouble. Fires over to the right side. He got Caught. it. Did he get it? He did it. The Pirates win. 
I have no idea who caught it because he was mobbed immediately, but Southwestern in overtime opens the 2022 season with a 32-31 win in overtime. Pirates fight, fight. yeah we win, ay. Pirates fight, ay. to the end, whoa. Pirates fight, yeah, yeah we win, Well, other than that, it was just a boring Saturday night. I mean, uh, boy, what a, what, a, what a ball game. And again, that sort of back and forth whiplash. You had them out, a nice big lead, they came back. But you guys didn't cave. I thought that was pretty cool that you didn't fight back. I think on the, their, their final possession, they had the one first down right away, and I thought that might be enough for them to run out the clock. But you got the stop and got the punt and got it back, and we saw what happened. Luckily, we had two timeouts. We, you don't want to use any of your timeouts in the second half if you don't have to, but there was one time we, we needed to use a timeout on offense. Um, so we did. Luckily, two timeouts uh, worked well. Um, when we turned the ball over inside the 10 with less than three minutes left, I'm, probably the odds of us winning were maybe, you know, three, four, five percent. You know, right. how, how they run all those odds and, and statistical analyses these days. Uh, so the win percentage was probably pretty low, but we did a great job on defense uh, of getting, a, getting that stop. Uh, they helped us with a short punt and they committed a penalty on it. Right. So when we got it, we were right at the edge of field goal range. Um, and we had time to, to complete a pass and, and spike it and get Charlie on. And uh, we'll talk to Charlie here in a little bit. Mm -hmm. And uh, Charlie nailed it. I mean, it would have been good from 55. He, he said he was pretty fired up <laughs> yeah. when I talked to him on Sunday about it. So he had plenty of, plenty of juice to get the ball there. Um, and then in overtime, we, 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 we talked after they had scored about uh, you know, what we wanted to do. And I started by talking with our defensive coaches. And Coach Kriesel said, hey, if we got a play that we like, um, we're fine if we go for the win. So we talked with uh, the offensive coaches, and even before the drive started, uh, I talked with Coach Mask and Coach Ross, and they said they had a two-point play that they liked. And uh, so I told the defensive guys, you can take your headsets off, you're done. This is <laughs> when we score, we're going to play for the win. Uh, and that's what we did, and everybody executed, so uh, we pulled it out. That's funny. Your, Brian, your, your brother Ryan called it. He on the, I didn't see it flat for the fact, but he called it. He said Joe's going to go for two. We've done that before. Um, we, yeah, I've won several games in overtime uh, playing for the win. I, I just feel like if you, if you get the ball second and you have one play to win, that's pretty good odds. Right. I mean, if you, if you, if you know, uh, I, I think our whole team would say the same thing. If we we're playing Calu and we knew if we could make one play for three yards and win the game, uh, we'll, we'll like those odds. Now, if we didn't like a play, you know, then we could have continued to kick it and, right. and, and play. But then, then it flips. Then we would be back on offense first. And it's a really big advantage to, to an overtime be going second. And whoever called the coin toss did a good job of winning the coin toss because <laughs> we, got to go on, uh, we got to go on defense first and we knew exactly what we needed. Uh, and we took advantage of that situation. Let's uh, throw up some of the stats from uh, Saturday night and take a quick glance at them and see if there's anything that stood out uh, in your mind. Pretty evenly statistically overall. They had a few extra... A few extra yards. I think, uh, yeah, you won the time of possession, uh, but they had won, they won the turnover battle. So, you know, as you would expect for an overtime game, it seemed like a pretty even contest. Anything stand out for you statistically? No, I think the story was they, they had a pretty flawless fourth quarter uh, where we had trouble, you know, pulling, pulling that margin to even a bigger margin than it was in the second half. And I think that was the, was the difference. I think we left the, the door open a little bit. Um, you know, I'm not sure if that time of possession is right on. Uh, it sure felt like they were on the field a lot. They ran 81 plays at our defense, right. and their, their running back carried it 39 times. And over the course of the game, the game, that can take a little bit of a toll. So that, that was a factor as well in going for two was, you know, our defense already been out there 81 plays. Yeah, and Monday our starting night. defense, we were relying on a lot on special teams. We had some guys that were probably out there, you know, close to 95 plays maybe. Mm -hmm. And so, to, again, to have one play to win the game when your defense has already been out there 95 times, we, we, liked, we liked our odds, we liked our play, um, and Landry and JoJo connected on it. And of course, our, our line did a good job with it as well. So a good team play, a good team win. Take a look at the second page we got for you and some of the individual stats. And, uh, both quarterbacks had a really good night. Gilpin did a lot of damage, as expected, with his legs. JoJo Wilson, uh, kind of a coming out party. Uh, talk about their running back a little bit. You mentioned him. He had a lot of yards, but it took him a, a lot of carries to get there. But like you said, that kind of wears on a defense. That's their style is uh, they're going to run it about every first down and every second and third and short. And if they get into a, a second long or third and five or more, then they'll, then they'll pass it more. Um, that was their style. So it really didn't, didn't surprise us that they gave the, 
gave that guy the ball 38 times. He was a big dude. I'm not yeah. sure how he looked. <laughs> Sometimes white can make you look slimming on a football broadcast, right. but he was a, a pretty big guy, about a 230-pound running back, um, ran, ran with his, his shoulders over his knees. Um, so he did, he did a nice job, and they did a good job of feeding him. But we also did a pretty good job on first down of limiting yes. him. Yeah. And so our first down running stats were, were pretty darn good throughout the game. And that's one of our defensive objectives is to hold them to three yards or less on two-thirds of their first downs. And we accomplished that. Uh, and, and that really set us up well. The one thing we can probably do better defensively is third down defense. And I think we'll get better at that. You know, we'll figure out what our best style is, and, and we'll do better on, on third downs this week, I think. Well, I know I went home and took a nice bath, and I didn't have to get in his way. So I can't imagine what the defense felt after that. Um, but, yeah, just a, just a thrilling ball game from, from start to finish. What a difference to open up the season with a win like that. And that, is that the kind of win that can maybe set the tone for the whole season? If nothing else, you know that you're in that situation again. You pulled it out of the fire before. Well, it's better than losing. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, the other thing we talked about with the team is it's uh, – that was a, about as thin of a margin as it could be. I mean, that there was two defenders right there. I had a good view of it. There were there were six arms going for that ball, four yeah. for them and two <laughs> for us, and it just slid right in there. I mean, it was literally inches away from being knocked down or defended, and um, they had a rusher off the edge that was right on, hanging on Landry. So we pulled that one out by yeah. by the margin. But we did we did enough. I mean, we did a great job on defense in the first three quarters. Um, we did well enough on offense when we really needed to. You know, we had a 98-yard drive in the second quarter, which was really good. They kept pinning us with their punts, and we did a good job of kind of digging out there. So as a team, we, we did enough. Uh, we, we, you know, we made that field goal when we had to make the field goal. Right. We got the two-point conversion when we had to get the two-point conversion. So really good team win. And, and to your point, yes, I mean, it's great to know um, that you can stick with it. There was, I don't think... Even when it's priced statistically, we had like a 3 4% chance of winning. There was never a feeling on the sideline of, oh, my gosh, we let this one slip away. Um, maybe it's because I have dual-eared headsets and they couldn't hear it, but I really don't, <laughs> I really don't think so. None of the coaches ever right. felt like um, we, we thought that we were, we were out of it. So I think that is a great way to, to start the season, to have your, uh, your grit tested. And I think we passed that test of uh, being a gritty team and sticking with it. Well, you know, you mentioned that, that last play of the game for the two-point conversion. You saw or didn't see on camera because all three of our camera operators were following the quarterback. They thought he was going down. Great job getting it out. Great catch. Well, I knew where to look, too. I knew where it was true. going. True. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> had, a, had to kind of cheat a little bit. Uh, anything else to talk about here in week number one? No, a great game, and I can't wait to, you know, you can talk to uh, Charlie was elected by our, our players as a special teams MVP and Alec Gomez as our defensive MVP, so it's going to be fun to, to get their perspective. And Alec had a great strip uh, fumble that turned into the, the uh, Colby Bartlett touchdown that right. we saw. Um, so that was a big swing in the game right, to score right off of the turnover that Alec created. And, of course, Charlie with the with – the, uh, game tying field goal with with one second on the clock, so it'll be fun to hear their perspective on on what they thought. I've seen a few of those from Charlie coming from Vandergriff, so we'll talk to him about that here in just a second. Congratulations, Coach. Uh, we will take a break and come back and talk to uh, the special teams MVP, MVP sophomore quarterback Charlie Fournier right after this break. Uh, we've seen the quarter number one. You're watching SU Football Weekly here from Jack's Lounge and the beautiful Georgetown Sheraton right here on Vibe Live.
Hey, and welcome back to SU Football Weekly here on Vibe Live. Merle Bird Channel along with the whole crew as we get ready for quarter number two. And again, want to uh, thank some of our sponsors, uh, Jack's Lounge the George, at the Georgetown Sher Sheridan, of course. Uh, John F. Lewis CPA, Mighty Fine Burgers, Fries and Shakes, Miniman Press and Waterboy Graphics, Primerica Financial Solutions, Ross and Champion, Rudy's and Schlotsky's Georgetown. And I'm now joined by a young man whose name I call quite a few times over the years, both on KMX Sports and on Vibe Live. Uh, he is a sophomore kicker from the Southwestern Pirates and a former kicker from the Vanderbilt Vipers. I do the Vipers games on Vibe. Mr. Charlie Fournier. Charlie, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So, uh, boy, we'll talk about the kick here in just a minute. But a little background. You introduce, introduce yourself to the folks at home if you can real quick. And get the microphone just a little closer to your mouth there. Right there. There you go. Perfect. Good? Uh, yeah, uh, I'm Charlie Fournier. I'm from Austin, Texas. Played at Vandergriff High School, and now I'm a sophomore kicker here at Southwestern. And you're also a biology major, I saw. What attracted you to yes, that sir. field? Um, both my parents are in healthcare. My mom actually just graduated from University of Texas with her PhD in nursing, and my dad's in healthcare administration. So I kind of just grew up all around biology, medical field kind of thing. So they kind of inspired me to go down that path. What do you think about doing when you get out of college then? Uh, I think I want to go to PA school after I'm done with undergrad here at Southwestern. So I don't know where that is yet, but that's the plan <laughs> as of right now. Yeah, at least a couple of years away to think about that one, right? Yes, sir. Well, you're a local guy from Austin. What attracted you to Southwestern, and uh, what, what, what's the experience been like here for you? I mean, the experience has been awesome. I mean, I love all the professors, and my teammates have been great since the moment I got here. I think one of the big things that drew me to Southwestern is being close from home, being from Austin. I'm 45 minutes away, right. and I can go back and visit my family, go catch my brother who's a sophomore in high school. He's playing for Vandergriff now, so I can go catch his games. So, yeah, I think just a combination of that and a great education and everything I was looking for in the football program. I mean, Coach Austin and all the other coaches just made me feel so at home on the visit, and the values that they preached just really sought out to me, and I really liked it. So. Oh, I saw your brother play just the other night. So, and, and, and come on, be honest. You live 45 minutes away, so mom could do your laundry, right? Ah, uh, no, no. <laughs> no, no. Well, here's some numbers for you folks. Uh, in high school, Charlie was 86 out of 87 in point after attempts, 13 on 16 on field goals with a long of 49 yards. And as Coach alluded to in the first segment, that 49 yarder was good for 60, I swear. Um, so far at SU, you're 5 for 5 on PATs. Uh, so that's 91 out of 92 on extra points if you keep the score at home. You had the earlier field goal blocked on Saturday night, but then you bounced back and, and drove the 34-yarder for the tie. So t talk about that kick a little bit. Game was on the line, bad angle, nasty weather. Talk about the kick, what was going through your head, all that kind of stuff. I mean, of course, just the situation, there's a little bit of pressure there, but our coach is doing a fantastic job of preparing us every day in practice. We work field goal almost every day, field goal block. And me and the guys just felt really prepared, regardless of what happened on that first field goal. We trust in our coaches in the process and how much time and effort we put into it. And once we got out there, it was just second nature, honestly. Now, what I don't remember for sure is, have you ever been in that situation before where you had that situation? I remember a game at Hendrickson. Coach Killian probably doesn't want to think about this because you were in the locker room for about two hours after a lightning delay and came out and kicked a field goal that put the game kind of out of reach into an empty stadium, but have you ever been in a situation where the game itself was on the line? Uh, the My junior year, we were playing Bridgeland, I believe, first Playoff round game. of the playoffs. Yeah, that's we right. Were, we were up, or we were tied 13-13, and I had a game-winning extra point, yeah. but no field goals to, that That was different, so <laughs> a little bit more stressful there. How, how, I was going to say, how did that compare Saturday night, how did that compare to that playoff game at Vandergriff in terms of the pressure and, and the release once you saw the kick was going to go through? I mean, it was pretty similar, but like I said before, I trust in the coaches and the guys that I'm out there with, and once I get out there, it's pretty much second nature. I trust my snap and my hold and just go out there and kind of do my thing. Well, you're looking at my notes because that leads into my next question. All the eyes are on you. You're the kicker, that kind of thing. But it's sort of like a NASCAR race. You know, Chase Elliott doesn't win a, game, a race by himself. He's got a whole pick crew to back him up. Yes, you've, you've got your holder. Uh, we got an email from uh, talking about your long snapper, Eli Taylor. Talk about that work that you guys have to do together, that whole unit, uh, to make it automatic when you get on the field? I mean, they're great. Like I said, the coaches really stress in practice, the battery time, like how fast we're making sure we're getting off. They're always working with the linemen to make sure the blocking's good. And it's just day after day, you're working on the same thing. And eventually, you get to build that trust. And I have all the faith in the world in Eli and in Damien as my holder. And it worked out. <laughs> So how does it work in practice? What are you doing during the practice? What are you doing throughout the week to get ready? I mean, throughout the week, we just do 
like field goal. I mean, we do all sorts of special teams all the time. The coaches really put a lot of emphasis on that and just making sure that everyone knows their job and does it to the best of their ability. But yeah, I mean, it's just repetition. I mean, since the first day of fall camp, I've been working with the same guys, multiple reps every day. And just over time, you just get to build that trust. Do you have that thing? You didn't have to do it on Saturday night, but do you have that, that special situation? You guys work on this where the clock is running, you're out of time off, so you got to get the unit on the field and get set up. You, you work through that in practice as well. Yes, sir. We've gone through that a few times. It's one of those things where you have to practice just in case that situation. And we've gone through that, and me and the whole unit feel comfortable that, with that if that were ever to present itself. So. Now, I know you played soccer at Vandergrift as well. Any interest in doing that here at Southwestern, or is one college level sport enough for you? One is enough. I'm all about football here at Southwestern. Very cool. Yes, sir. Um, well, how much different is college football from high school? We talked about your history at Vanderbilt. What's, what's the difference for you? I mean, it's not that different. Um, it, there's a lot more independence to it. Like, I've got classes on my own, and no one's forcing me to go to practice and go to early lifts and everything. But, I mean, at the end of the day, it's just get to play the sport that I love and get to be surrounded by a group of guys and a group of coaches that care about me and I care about. And it's just an awesome feeling to be surrounded by people that care about you and have the same values and the same goals as you. I've always kind of compared kickers in football to like goalkeepers in soccer or, or, or hockey. There's kind of that different mentality. Talk about that mental toughness that it takes because there might be times where you're not doing anything in terms of gameplay for like an hour. And then you got to go out and do what you did on Saturday night. Yes, sir. Again, it just goes back to that same thing. It's just trust, trust in the coaches, trust in what we do at practice and everything that we do leading up to the game. I mean, during a game, you could get two, three field goals, maybe, but everything comes in the preparation before the game. At the end of the day, it's all the reps that we do during fall camp and all of the pre-practice batteries and all of that that really makes me feel confident and makes our unit feel confident when we go out there. Well, I know you're only in your second year at Southwestern, but what's your favorite, uh, favorite memory so far? I, I, got, I got a pretty good nomination, I'm guessing. But, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm going to have to say that field goal is definitely yeah. the best memory so far. <laughs> like, like Coach Austin said earlier, I think that's a game that I'm never going to forget. And I right. think that goes for a lot of players on the team as well. That was probably the easiest question I've ever asked anybody. <laughs> uh, any any shout-outs that you want to give? You know, you give your mom fair warning that you're bringing the laundry home this weekend, anything like that? <laughs> I mean, shout-out my family, my grandparents, uh, Snapper and Holder, Eli and Damian, and the new specialist coach, Coach Tyler, for working with me this year and he's been a lot of help and put a lot of confidence in me and then all the coaches as well just everything they do for me and the rest of the team on a daily basis really puts us in a great position to be successful on the field well congratulations again on saturday night i enjoyed watching you in vandergriff i'm going to enjoy watching you here at southwestern this year uh, any final thoughts here before we let you go go pirates there you go Charlie Fournier, a game time kicker to send the game in overtime on Saturday Night Sophomore here at Southwest. So we'll take a break. When we come back, Chuck Gracie is going to take over the helm for Gracie's corner, and he's going to be talking to a defensive MVP, Mr. Alex Gomez. That'll be coming up in, in the third quarter of the SU Football Show, which you are watching from Jack's Live at the Georgetown Sheraton right here on Vibe Live. Back in a minute.
Welcome back to SU Football Weekly. Joining me for Crazy's Corner is Alec Gomez, and that's Alec Xander Gomez, correct? Yes, sir. You know, it's, it's a little confusing. I know the, the first uh, season or two that I uh, covered some Southwestern football, I wanted to call you Alex. Yeah. But that's not actually what your name is, right? No, no. I was blessed with a K. With a K, yeah, Alec. <laughs> well, and, and, and I'm a fan of K, given my last name, Crazy. Um, so, Alec, um, I want to talk to you a little bit about defense. Defense is one of the best parts of the game. It, it's, it's one of the most fundamental parts of football, the tackling and, and the taking on of blocks. And the performance from the Southwestern University Pirate defense on Saturday was quite impressive. Uh, give us your thoughts on the overall performance of the team uh, in light of uh, the trip to Kalu last year when – you know, the defense might not have played up to the level that they can play and, and did so on Saturday. Give us your thoughts there on that. Well, definitely left us a sour taste in our mouth coming back from California after a 37-point loss. But, I mean, uh, we knew coming in it was going to be a tough game. We knew coming in that we wanted some, some revenge from last year. And uh, we told them they're coming to Texas now, so everything's bigger in Texas. So they learned real quick on Saturday what it was like to play in Texas. Yeah, and, and, and speaking of, of big, and, and it was mentioned earlier in tonight's show, the running back for the Cal Lutheran um, Kingsman was a pretty hefty young man. Uh, he brought about 230 pounds every time he carried the football. And as Coach <laughs> mentioned, he carried it about 39 times. Yeah. So that's really a workmanlike effort for the defense to minimize the damage of such a bruising back. Talk about how you guys prepared knowing that that was the running back that you were going to face. Well, we knew go going through the week that uh, the running back was going to be bigger. We knew, uh, I feel like the stat sheet lied a little bit. They said he was 205. It definitely was not 205. <laughs> no, I saw him. I'm on the field, and, oh, yeah. and he's definitely not 205. That boy running at you is, uh, hey, you better bring it because he was bringing it. And he ran the ball 38 times, and he made sure he was going to lower that shoulder every time. I mean, uh we just got prepared well. You know, the coaches knew what we were going to get into, and we knew what we were going to get into, and it was just a mentality thing. It was a not up or shut up. Well, one of the more uh, impressive things was uh, there was never any uh, backing off of the defense. You know, uh, typically when, when an offense can hammer a running back towards a defense like that over time, it'll soften them up and, and create an opportunity for big plays for that offense. And for the most part, on Saturday, you guys were able to hold them down uh, throughout the, the majority of the game. So um, when you're preparing for a, a team like Cal Lou, when you know they can throw too and they have lots of athletes, um, how does your team prepare together uh, as opposed to separate units? You know, obviously the linebackers are, are going to be supporting a lot of run, but there are those times when you have to uh, find yourself pressuring the quarterback or maybe even – uh, dropping back into some coverage. Talk about that a little. Well, bit. I mean, just experience comes to the table a lot when we're preparing now. Most of us are juniors and seniors on the on the defense starting. So I mean, it's just knowing how to prepare for a game and knowing that um, we played them last year, so we we knew what was going to happen. We knew that they like to run the ball last year. I'm pretty sure they ran the ball, I think 30, 20 times as well. They threw the ball on us, and you know, they want to throw for some shots, and you know, they got some shots on Saturday. But I mean, we made sure to buckle down and make sure. That the Pirates defense was there to stay. Well, and you have a lot of returning starters from that squad last year that, that are on the, the defense this year. Talk about the importance of knowing uh, your, your fellow teammates and, and their assignments and, and the trust that you have to have that they're going to execute their job so that you can do yours. Oh, yeah, just definitely knowing that uh, we've played together before. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a team effort. You know, we fix each other's mistakes out there. We know what one's going to do. I feel like playing – with them for I think three years now it's it's just knowing that uh the guy behind me has my back and just for the D-line to know the linebackers have their back and the secondary has the linebackers back so it's just knowing that uh, we click together we make sure it's it's one at the end well and and there were some moments that that you know they didn't go Southwestern's way you know I, I'll think of one in particular where a pass was tipped at the goal line and it just dropped right into the Calu receiver's hands um how do y'all have short term memory for those types of plays, especially in the chaos of a game like Saturday nights? Well, I mean, just knowing it, it already happened. It happened. We have to leave it behind us. Um, we do a good job of, you know, picking up our players up. We never, it's never, oh my God, no, it's a, come on, we next play, next play mentality. So when you coming in, I mean, 
football's gonna happen you know you never know you never know what to expect but i mean you expect for the best and prepare for the worst so well and uh congratulations by the way i didn't say that on on defensive mvp let's let's give him a, a round of applause for that i i, I forgot to mention that um, and and we, we talked a little bit about how uh, the different position groups on defense support one another to have an effective scheme, uh, but the football itself is a team sport that's made up of three portions of the game, offense, defense, and special teams. Talk about the relation of those two or those three different units, uh, especially offense and defense particularly, um, because there, there have been times – uh, in football history when a defense could be great, but if the offense isn't getting any first downs and moving the ball and the defense gets tired pretty quickly. Talk about that inner relationship and how you guys uh, uh, relate to one another in practice and, and going into the game. Well, I mean, it's just trusting the other people. I mean, just knowing that the offense, even if they're not moving the ball, hey, we're going to go get a stop for them and make sure that they can score, um, put them in the best position possible. I mean, we had some moments in Saturday where – we filled gas, but that, that didn't let off our, our pedal. We knew that um, five was going to come running the ball again, so we knew we had to stop them. And it's just knowing um, just to trust each other. You know, it's, a, it's, it's football at the end of the day. All three phases work together. And uh, if all three phases are clicking, it makes the game so much easier. But, I mean, something we just got to grind it out. Well, I want to shift gears a little bit, and I want to talk about you're, – you're from uh, Valley View High School in McAllen. And, and, you know, if you look at the, the Pirates roster, there's a significant number of players from the, the same area that you're from. Uh, talk about that pipeline of players that is uh, coming to Southwestern. You have, you have some guys from your school as well as uh, McAllen in that, that, just that immediate area. Um, talk about the – importance of knowing those guys, uh, playing with them in high school or against them. Maybe they're younger brothers of guys you played against. Yeah, I mean, it's just seeing familiar faces. And uh, we know that people from, from where we're from, you know, we come with it. It's a uh, nitty or gritty down there. I mean, it's as tough as it gets. So, I mean, we know that we have somebody that's been through the same. So we know when it's time to strap them up, it's, we're going to be ready. Well, and, you know, you, you hear about Texas football all the time. You hear about Houston and, and Dallas and Austin. Not, not a whole lot of people talk about the Valley, but there's some some really good football down in the Valley. Yes, sir, there really is, yeah. I mean, it's the same thing. We have 11 players play the same, you know. It's, it hurts, too, so, I mean, it's football. <laughs> well, and, and it's, uh, you know, sometimes the surfaces aren't always as kind uh, in the sun, sun-kissed uh, valley of, oh, of yeah. Texas. Oh, yeah. <laughs> So you're accustomed to a little bit of that heat when when it comes to get playing here in the state, and that was probably a little bit of an advantage for uh, Southwestern on Saturday night. Oh yeah, we we love the heat over here. We love it. All right, well let's talk about uh, life as a student athlete at at Southwestern. Um, what is your major? What is your plans after college? And and what's it like to be a a, a football player at, at Southwestern University? A well, student athlete. Let me correct that. Yeah, I, I'm majoring in business, and I have a, gonna get a minor in communication. And um, after school is just um gonna look into some law schools. I want to be a lawyer, so it's just making the steps right now to make sure I'm in the best position possible for that when I'm done here in Southwestern. And uh, being a football player here at Southwestern has been amazing. I have the opportunity to play with my t with my twin brother. Uh, we both got offered to play here. I think that's a big reason why um, we chose to stay. It's the only school that offered both of us, so it makes it it's it's a great school. I'm only six hours away from home, which is pretty close. That's reasonable. Yeah, I mean, not being at like the other schools, but um, it's just a great experience. The coaches make it great. The the people, the players that we play with, it's the atmosphere that it's southwestern. It's it's just a beautiful experience. So you, you talked about wanting to go to law school. Do you have a specialty of law that you're uh, bankruptcy. interested Bankruptcy. Bankruptcy law? Yes, sir. Okay. I spent some time working uh, with people's student loan bankruptcy, so I have some familiarity with that. Um, so it is uh, it could be boring, but there is a uh, lot of help that you can, you can afford people in, in that industry, in that area of law. So. Yeah, definitely a lot of perks. So what uh, – what are your plans? What do you expect from the team this season? Do you feel like this win on Saturday is is a uh, pushes us in a positive direction, or do you feel like that was already something that was going at the end of last year, and this is just building on that? Well, I mean, we we finished off with three wins last year, but it's definitely a stepping stone into this year, knowing what we got, knowing that we're able to. Maybe we didn't finish the game we wanted to, but hey, we got it done. 
but it's just a stepping stone, you know, taking it week by week. Um, teams only get harder. None of them gets easy. We play in a really hard conference, so it's just being able to prepare for that week, being able to prepare for that team, and it's just going out there on Saturday and executing. Well, and, and you've sharpened some skills. You've tested yourself in a, a pretty intense situation. I know any fan that was there at the stadium it can witness that it, that it was a very intense moment. And I want to congratulate you on the win. I want to congratulate you on uh, defensive MVP voting. That's pretty impressive. Uh, that shows your team knows you're a leader. Um, do you have anybody you want to shout out before we close this segment and uh, go to the fourth quarter with Coach Austin and Merle again? We we'll just definitely want to shout out to the defense, to our D-line, linebackers, the DBs, coaches, Coach Creasel, Coach Killian, uh, Coach Kelly. We did a great job of uh, making a great game plan for Kalu, and we went out there and executed. I want to say thank you to my parents for always being there at the games, and uh, go Pirates. Go Pirates. So we'll be right back here on SU Football Weekly for uh, the fourth quarter where Merle and Coach Austin will talk about the upcoming game. Stay with us. And welcome back to the fourth and final quarter of SU Football Weekly here on Vibe Live. Merle Bertrand joined again by Coach Austin. I want to thank the rest of our sponsors here tonight. Bricks and Ale at the Sheraton, Stephanie Featherstone with State Farm, Upstream Investment Partners, Zan's Hands, Georgetown Shirt Company, First American Title, The Golden Rule, Mesquite Creek Outfitters, Groove Line Productions, HEB, and House of Gains. And Coach, before we get started, I want to give a shout out uh, to Chuck Crazy. You know, uh, we, had, uh, we had the broadcast for the first five years on KMAX Sports. I went to somebody else. When it came back to Vibe, Chuck had done uh, several games uh, for one of our competitors a couple of years, for the past couple of years. Still does uh, Leander High School. He's a really good play-by-play -play guy in his own right. And when the news kind of developed and that, all that kind of stuff, Chuck said, whatever you need, I'm here for you. So I thought that was a class act, Chuck. Thank you very much. Yep, great to have Chuck with us still. He loves being on the sideline, and um, so I think he's – he was all smiles there on Saturday, so I feel like for, for Southwestern football, he's probably right where you'd like to be, uh, loving it, so uh, really cool to have the, the yeah. one-two punch. Yeah, absolutely, so thanks to him for that, and as Chuck alluded to, the Pirates play the final, what is now a non-conference game Saturday, uh, that is going to be against former ASC conference mate Bell Haven in Jackson, Mississippi, and I guess the first question that comes to mind, given the terrible situation they're dealing with there, is... Is the game still on? The game going to be played as scheduled with all the water crashes that they're having in Jackson, Mississippi? It will be. Yeah, it, it will be there. I've talked with their coach several times, uh, you know, about the situation. And uh, clearly the, the boil water advisory isn't a good situation. Mm -hmm. uh, but he said it's maybe not quite as extreme as the, the news has made it out to be. I mean, folks are having to f find drinking water. But according to him, there's never been a shortage. It's plentiful. You can go to the store and get drinking water. It's all over the city. The, their, their campus just has stockpiles of water, whether it's the big, like, water cooler types. That right, you, right. Uh, or bottled water. They've got pallets of it at their, in their locker room. 
Uh, so he said, just bring some drinking water. There's good water pressure. You can shower. Uh, you still don't want to drink it. Um, the boil water advisory according again my source is the bellhaven coach so if something's wrong you know i'm just reporting uh it's it's a precaution at this point because mm -hmm. they've restored water they've restored water pressure uh and they're just making sure it's really where they want it to be before they tell everyone that, that it's okay to drink but um mill saps and bellhaven are both in jackson and they played last week right um and it was just fine our training staff will be in contact with their training staff about getting water for the game and bellhaven's going to be really good about that and um, all we have to do is make sure we load our motor coaches up with the drinking water we need for the weekend and we'll be good to go man 60 big hulking uh college football players they might need an extra bus coach well you know gallon we, we tell them to drink a gallon of water a day so a gallon a day for 71 people is uh 213 gallons yeah. something like that i don't know i'm not a math, not a math guy charlie can do the math <laughs> <laughs> coach coach king our, our equipment guy will make sure we have all the water that we need well as for the football itself the pirates have had some success against the blazers an overall four and one record including last year's 34 to 27 win also in jackson the only blemish loss in the coven stricken 2020 season both teams enter at one and oh you mentioned they played uh, millsteps uh, they beat them 49 to 21 at millsteps uh, what can pirates fans expect from this year's bellhaven team they're a good football team. They lost three games last year. They finished third in the ASC, which is saying something. Um, they lost to the national champ, Mary Harden Baylor. They lost to the number five team, Har team Harden Simmons. And uh, we beat them as well. We played really well uh, last year. And it was coming off of uh, that Cal Lutheran game where we didn't think we played as, as well. You know, one of the things you probably to mention about Cal Lutheran is they're a better team than last year. Mm -hmm. We're a better team as well. So they were no slouch. They're a good football team. They'll be a 6-7 win team again, I would predict, and if they can stay healthy in their conference. But we did a great job last year of bouncing back, um, and we did really well in, on the road. We did some things that really helped us. Uh, we blocked a punt for a touchdown. Um, we converted a fake punt, which turned into a touchdown drive. Um, and we had real, a really good fourth quarter, uh, a couple of really big stops on defense. And then we got the ball with about four and a half minutes left, and we never gave it back to them. So we're able to salt the clock away the last four minutes. Um, so I think we played a really good game, one of our better games uh, last year against them. And I cautioned the team in our team meeting on Sunday, you, you can't just say we beat them last year, we're going to beat them this year. Right. Um, we were not the favorite in that game last year. We played really, really well. I don't know who the favorite would be this year. Don't care. We're going to go give them our best effort. But we just can't rely on the fact that you know, we've beaten them in the past um, to, to say that where it's going to show up and, and they're going to get out of the way. They're a team that doesn't change a whole lot. They, they, they like their style of football. And so we have a pretty good idea of what they do. Of course, they'll have some game plan adjustments for, for, for us and we, and we will for them. But I think both teams are fairly familiar uh, with each other. Their coaching staff has been there for about five years now. Um, and our coaching staff hasn't changed. So th there's always a little bit of, of cat and mouse with it, which, are, which will be fun. But we know their style. They're going to play with a lot of tight ends and fullbacks. And they're going to come at us in the running game again right. um, and then take some isolation shots because you have to you know, bring more linebackers and safeties closer to the football, the more people they bring in. And so they'll try to get some one-on-one -on -one matchups on the perimeter. Um, and so uh, the nice thing is that that dovetails a little bit from what we just did with Cal Lutheran. They played with a lot of tight ends, a lot of H-backs, so we don't have to come up with a completely different style. It's like we're going from two drastically different styles on offense. Uh, defensively, they'll be very different. They're an, an odd stack defense. Uh, it's the only time we'll see this style of defense all year, but again, we've played against it. You know, our, mm -hmm. our, and a lot of our returning players have played against it. So I think we'll, I think we'll be okay if we can go and play a really strong game, iron out some of those week one things. I think we'll have uh, an, another chance to to play a good solid game. Well, it sounds like one of the things that might have changed. I remember that the first year that you played them, the first time at the ASC, they didn't punt. They didn't punt at all. And you mentioned you blocked the punt last year, so that might have changed a little bit. But I mean, that, that was crazy. I hadn't seen anything well, like that, that before. Well, that's when Hal Mummy was their coach, and Hal right. does some interesting things on the football field. And um, he didn't do him any favors because we scored about 70 points on him because they refused <laughs> to punt, and we, right. were, we were pretty good. And um, yeah, they didn't punt right down to the very end. So thanks, Hal. Appreciate it. <laughs> well, uh, what's interesting is he mentioned you completely changed your offense last season, yet you still had some success against Bellhaven with two different styles of offense. Does the team's mindset, just talking overall, does the team's mindset change when facing a team that they've had some success against in the past versus the team that they struggled against? You mentioned just because you beat them last year, that doesn't matter. How do you drill that into the guys to make sure they understand that? Well, I hope the mindset doesn't change. The approach that we want our players to take is that every game is the big game. Every week is the big week. Um, we have a process that we want to take from week to week of analyzing the previous game, 
getting really healthy at the beginning part of the week, um, putting in the different parts of our game plan throughout the week, prepping all of our special teams, and then making sure that everything comes together on Friday. We want to do that. The goal of our football team is to do that the same way every week, no matter who we play, um, so that we can avoid, you know, avoid those ups and downs, avoid the peaks and valleys. So that will be our goal. Um, and I think we're getting pretty good at that again. We were so disjointed for a couple seasons that it was tough to really have a routine and have a process mm -hmm. of preparing for a game. Um, but, you know, we're on a four-game winning streak, and hopefully we can continue to do the things that we've done over the last four football games that have given us a good chance. Of course, working your process doesn't guarantee anything, but it gives you a, it gives you a good chance of being ready for the game and being prepared. Uh, and I think we'll have a good approach this week. And I know this is now a non-conference game. I know you mentioned last week you don't really approach those any differently than anything else, but does it give you a little bit of latitude if there's something you'd like to see in a game situation to, to try here, knowing you get one more chance to try it before the, the games really start to count? Merle, I just said every game's the big game. Yeah, I know. There's no, it's, this is not a preseason game. It's not a scrimmage. It's a game we are going to it's win. It's like Princess Bride. There's We're mostly dead win. and all the way yes. dead. Yes, that's <laughs> correct. That's correct. Yep. Well, without giving away the story, do you have any sort of specific changes in mind for the Pirates that you might, that after seeing one game and seeing the, these guys in action? Well, we're just going to have to get ourselves a new giant, that's all. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently not everyone's seen the Princess Bride. That was right. another Princess Bride reference. Are, are we, are we Marissa dating? has. I'm sure David has. We might be, we, we might be dating ourselves here a little <laughs> we bit. Might be, we might be. Um, okay, what was the question? Because I was thinking about how to come back with another Princess Bride <laughs> quote. No, I just, you know, without not giving away the story, you're not going to, you know, tell people what you're up to. But do you have any, any changes of mind, any tweaks of mind after seeing the guys in action on Saturday night against Enemy Fire? Um, I think we're in the process of, of figuring that out early in the week. But we always look a little bit different offensively against Bellhaven because their defense is different than anything we're going to see. Their structure, it's a one time in a year that we'll see that structure. Uh, and that's kind of fun because we can do a little bit with some formations and some motions and some packages. Uh, so we'll be going through the week and, and seeing how that all looks. Of course, what we'd have is our basic offense, our run and shoot offense is, is always good every week. Um, but I think I know, I know on offense we'll, we'll look a little bit different, more, maybe some more motions and some more formations that, that we don't always do. Um, and defensively, they're going to line up formationally similar to what we saw with Cal Lutheran. So I think that's a great jumping off point. And then if our defensive coaches, as they analyze it, they see a way we can do things better than last week, you know, I think we'll do that. I think the one thing that, that they weren't real happy with was our third down defense. Again, really happy with right. the first down defense, not as happy with the third down defense. So I think that will be, I know that's something that we're focused on early in the week is to give our guys a really good plan to give them a chance at being really good on third down. Is it tough? You mentioned it's the only time you're going to see a defense like this. Is it, is it tough to work on that against practice? You got to get your defense to mimic what they do and, you know, talk, talk about the logistics of trying to do that a little bit. You know, it's a little bit challenging, but it's not like trying to simulate, you know, triple option. Right. Uh, it, so it, it is a little bit different, but I think we'll be, be able to get looks from our, from our players in practice. So I think we'll be okay. Um, and a lot of guys have played against us before. I mean, Landry played against them last year. So, right. they, you know, uh, Damian, our number two quarterback. So our, our quarterbacks have seen this, which is a really big thing. So more so, if, if it's not perfect looking for them, they, they know what it's supposed to look like. They've got film on it. So I think they'll have a comfort level. And we can make it look close enough for everyone else that I don't think we'll be unprepared. Well, obviously, the longest bus ride of the year for the Pirates, I think it edges out Sol Ross State by maybe an hour or so. Talking for the newer fans especially, talk about the logistics of that. How, how does that all come together? Who, who's in charge of all that kind of stuff? When are you leaving? All that kind of thing. We start working on our trips, especially one like this. We start working on this in probably May or June, um, working on getting it all figured out. And uh, Coach John Bishop is our uh, operations director, so he's the one that's working out the, the buses and the hotels and the meals and pulling everything. But we meet as a staff, and we troubleshoot. Uh, during the summer, we troubleshoot everything and try to figure it out. Um, you can't just stop anywhere with 70 people on two tour buses. <laughs> if they've got two urinals, you're going to be there for an hour and a half. Right. So it's right down to figuring out, you know, what gas station, what truck stop, um, you know, how you're going to eat when you're driving on the road. Uh, so there's a lot that, that, lot that goes into it to, to time your stops and time where you're going to be and, and make everything work. But we, we leave with it with a really detailed plan. I can't imagine just, you know, going out on the road with 71 people and be like, yeah, we'll see how it goes when we get out there and we'll, we'll get there when we get there. That, that would, that's not, not the way I want to go about doing that. So we have a really detailed itinerary before we leave. Well, I, I'm going to Bucky's in the zombies apocalypse. You can, you can live there for about a week. So if you ever yep. do get lost, maybe find a Bucky's and you'd be good to go. We're going to stop at the Bucky's and Terrell on the way there and the way back. So I know we'll be at Bucky's at least twice. 
We got to get Bucky's to be a corporate partner. We spent a lot of money there. There you go. Yeah. You know, our players do when we stop. <laughs> uh, well, it should be a, a fun ball game. Any final thoughts here that uh, you want to let the fans know about heading out for the big game? No, it was a, it was a cool weekend. And uh, again, the, they're a good football team. Um, and so it was great to pull that out. It would have been nice to um, extend that lead a little bit more. But as we said, it's a, it's a great learning experience to um, talk about how you can do things different to put them away. But the, the fortitude and the grit to, to get it in the end was, was really cool. And we're playing a really good team with Bellhaven. They received several first place votes in their new conference Saw in the that. USA South. Mm -hmm. um, they probably have at least, a, in my opinion, a 50% shot or better of making the playoffs in the new conference. And again, they finished third in the ASC last year. So a very good football team, a uh, very experienced football team. They've got about eight starters back on both sides of the football. So it should be, it should be a very good game. Well, that will be the Pirates against Bellhaven Saturday night, 7 o'clock from the Bellhaven Bowl in Jackson, Mississippi. And again, this is the only game of the year that we won't have broadcast on, on Vibe.com uh, this year. Uh, the decision made to broadcast this in state games. So be sure to go to SouthwesternPirates.com, and I'm sure there'll be a link posted there for how to watch uh, watch or listen from the from the folks in Jackson. There, yeah, and it, if if you can't find it through our website, just go to the Bellhaven Bellhaven website, and they'll have their they have a, they'll have their broadcast link through that. Exactly. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, if you do make it make the trip out there, drive safe, be careful, and uh, so want to thank our producer Jack Friel. Nice job tonight. Our uh, uh, director of technology, Cinna Vincott. Without her, half our broadcast wouldn't get on the air. Uh, Christina Weber, my better half, keeping an eye and an ear on the broadcast. Our guests tonight, uh, Charlie Fournier and Alexander Gomez. Get that part right. Chuck Gracie and uh, Coach Austin, of course. And uh, Bessie and Martinez, everybody with the Georgetown Sheraton. Have a great week and uh, safe travels if you head out to Jackson, Mississippi. And we'll see you back here one week from tonight at the Georgetown Sheraton to talk about the Pirates when they go 2-0. Have a great week. We'll see you next time. Good night, everybody. Come on. <laughs>